Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Stacked, powered by FreightWave Sonar. I'm your host, as always, VP of Product Marketing here at FreightWaves, Adam Robinson. On today's episode, I'm welcomed by the great Jeff Gran, not Gran, but Gran. And Grandma Gran, who thought her name was Gran, had to be informed, unfortunately, that the uh, family line found out they're from Sweden. And just like it's pronounced Saab, it's Gran. So, with no further ado, VP of Sales wow. Engineering at Turvo. <laughs> That's a way to kick off a, uh, a podcast episode. But thanks for joining me today, Jeff. You know, you're know, you from Turvo, the world's leading collaboration application designed specifically for the supply chain. We got a few things in common. I also worked at Turvo. And one of the things that I really saw there as we started building up the Dallas office and the company started beefing up on marketing and sales was that there was a fantastic opportunity between the account executive side and the solutions side to have some of that sales engineering background, you know, because what Turbo is really doing is, is pretty transformational. But when you're transformational, you need guys like Jeff, right? Because the industry is moving beyond the simple TMS. You know, we're turning into network like platforms like Turbo that go really further upstream into the supply chain. And that really is for the quest of, you know, increasing collaboration amongst all of those players who are involved in the supply chain. And that's why you need to think about technology that really includes the supply chain at the heart of any strategy, especially if you're trying as a brand or even a 3PL as you're serving your customers when it comes to customer experience. So before I get Jeff to introduce himself, I want the listeners and the watchers out there to uh, know what they're going to be hearing today. We're going to talk about the Turvo platform and all of the innovations that they've put together, especially the most recent launch of their Turvo collaboration cloud. So Jeff, thanks for coming on to Stack today. I got to talk to Luis last week. Um, so it's great to sit down with you. He was uh, really great at the 3PL Summit. Um, so it's great to have you. And as I do with all my guests, so the listeners get a sense of your background, tell us a little bit about your career and of course, the 30 second elevator pitch about Turbo. Sure, well, thank you and it's a pleasure to be here, Adam. So I've been in the supply chain for 30 years. And within that 30 years, I've had the privilege of working with companies such as Schneider National and affiliated divisions, uh, Penske, and then also for the last 13 or so years, I've spent in the SaaS uh, product space working for uh, Blue Jay as well as Mercury Gate. And bringing all that all that experience together has really made it uh, a great tool within the Turbo commercial team to really understand what our customers are looking for in that next evolution of supply chain. Now, from a Turbo so, perspective, so you've been there before. Is that what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's so uh, just from the sales engineering standpoint, that's one of the things that makes it so powerful. It's just that that practitioner, that operator uh, context that we have coming out of specific areas of supply chain. So my background has really allowed me to then go into a customer opportunity and with a laser focus, understand what their needs are, and then bring the specific services and products that Turbo has to offer to bear on that customer. Now, with Turbo, we are truly the industry's Cloud, first cloud native application designed specifically with supply chain and the customer experience at its core. We unify, digitize, and collaborate across all systems. So throughout today's uh, discussion, we're probably going to be talking about ERP, WMS, and TMS, and how there are best of breed solutions across those different platforms. And what Turbo does is we unify those and then take that data and give a user across the supply chain one view into their supply chain. By truly conicalizing the data, we allow it to have one view into the supply chain and then use Turbo as that single pane of glass to look into a supply chain. You know, who doesn't take an opportunity to use Google and let's Google something. You know, we need to know something, we Google it. Imagine if you had that for your supply chain. That's Turbo. Yeah, so you're, you know, you're just enabling that supply chain to work a little bit more seamlessly. You know, there's a lot of issues out there in the supply chain. We already had a global pandemic. It really started even before that with, uh, you know, Brexit talks and different trade war issues going on. So geopolitical forces were causing delays in the supply chain. Then we had to absorb the, the shutdowns that happened over the last year. Uh, and then in my town, a big freight hub, we saw uh, the freeze down in the DFW area. And then we got a Suez Canal blockade. Like what could the rest of the year bring for the world of supply chain? So it really is a proof of concept that 
collaboration is going to become increasingly important in this industry. And, you know, beyond just these disruptions, we're going to see sustainability go to the forefront of a lot of 3PL's mindsets and even shippers. And they're going to start to want to collaborate in order to reduce carbon footprints, just like uh, the guys that I talked to, Oren, CEO of Flock Freight, they've been able to really focus on this. And I think that's the, the next great initiative, but it's going to take people working together. To it's collaboration. So it's been a squishy word. You know, we've been talking about it. When I uh, worked at Turvo, it was something as a marketer that I, you know, really latched onto. But it's not just a, a marketing word, right? It's It's got some real value there when you can collaborate with technology. So why should freight market participants like shippers, brokers, and carriers, one, care about collaboration? And two, how can they use technology to enable collaboration within a tech pl platform like Turvo so it's also contextual and that they're able to then not have to be up, get up to speed, right? Um, that they're already ready to talk about what's going on all the way from the order to the cash side. Sure. Uh, awesome question. And this will be a great talk track. So in, in regards to that squishy word, and that's probably the best way to describe it, collaboration does shrink the supply chain. If you think about it, what it's really been doing, it, the genesis of that when we talk collaboration has been was EDI. And think about how old EDI is. I'm going to exchange data from one system to another. We're now collaborating. Now take it to the next level. And then, you know, driving into the it, to the other question of why should we care? People should care because it's truly the future. Uh, what we do is we expect more and more. And look at the Amazon effect, how it's really revolutionized the b2c experience this is where supply chain is really going all of supply chain where's my stuff so we're going from uh historically solving problems with headcount let's throw more bodies around it design a workaround design another process and so forth and what we're doing is we're now using tech and that technology to solve for that holistic customer experience and as you know customer experience is really where it's at if we don't get the customer experience that we want we will go find our services and products somewhere else in a way, collaboration isn't a new idea. It's just been inefficient and ineffective before. Uh, every phone call, email, uh, ad hoc report that could be created, again, maybe as some of those workarounds, uh, it, that's anything that would help somebody work and get their job done from day, to, get their day-to-day -day job. And that's been an attempt at collaboration. But there's a limit to how many phone calls and emails a person can do in one single day and then manage those, especially without errors, right? So why should a person have to look at your computer screen, call someone and tell some tell another person what they what they can see or what they need to know? What if a system was then exposing that information to you in, in the manner that you wish? And then also having those exceptions spilled out to you only as you would do, need those based on what your parameters are. Wouldn't it be easier to have that have it that way and then have computers then performing that integration behind the scenes so you have a more valuable and fulfilling work life uh, and then ultimately you're able to serve your customers even better well you know i was just telling my wife today you know and you could probably appreciate this in sales but there are so many communication platforms that exist today um you know slack you could have 14 to 20 conversations going with different people at the same time text linkedin social media uh, you know, the platforms you use to manage your job, whether for your, you know, side CRM or or my side, maybe some project management tools or content management system. And it can create quite a fatigue. So it's great to hear, you know, that you guys are really re thinking about how to reduce that fatigue so that you can strip it away and really get that strategic mindset. Um, but I also think it reminds me of when you have a service problem, like with your cable, and you tell someone all about your problem and they're like, oh, that's not my department. You're going to have to go talk to someone else. Like the biggest fear is, hey, uh, am I going to have to like retell this to this person? Because uh, I really don't want to have to do that. And I, I think that's what I love about that collaborative piece enabled by technology is that you don't get fatigued and you can pick up the conversation immediately without wasting any time. And so, you know, beyond that collaboration aspect, you know, 3PLs have uh, really been working a lot better with, with shippers collaboratively, just in the supply chain in general. And 3PLs continue to be a valuable aspect of the world of logistics and freight um, because shippers are increasingly having such bigger initiatives to focus on. They need partners. But because of the volatility in the freight market over the last 14 months and change, we're starting to see, 
you know, those three PLs go even further into that strategic mindset and they're using technology as a differentiator. You know, for example, Rider really went all in. They use Turvo for their platform Rider Share. And so they're going beyond just the simple A to B uh, point of moving freight to using that uh, Turvo platform to offer not only real time visibility and solving that, but a collaborative approach to ensure things that are really critical the on time delivery of essential raw materials and finished goods. And that's important to get the manufacturing side done. People kind of forget about that inbound side. You gotta, you gotta really think about that. And another one of your customers, Lineage, has implemented something similar, uh, just like Rider. They're using Turbo with their Lineage link to power their operations. And they're really getting a strategic differentiator. And we can all see if you're in the industry that they're not um, scared at raising a lot of money and they're doing that quickly. So how is that enabling Rider to be more strategic when, when they make an investment in Turvo? And how will they know like a lineage when it pays off? Okay. Um, so Rider and lineage, there's one thing that they have in common. What they're doing is they're making an investment to enable a differentiated digital customer experience, ultimately with the customer in mind. Back to, back to that customer experience, happy customers are going to buy more. So with, it, with that, they've, they also understand two things. People are used to and expect great expectations from their technology. Thanks to social networks that are out there, iPhones, and all the consumer tech we use every single day, some of those that you mentioned uh, previously. And now two, they have a window, this golden window of opportunity as a leader in their market to deliver that great customer experience and set that bar higher. And then it causes the competition to es essentially uh, chase them. Now, what, what we're really seeing is the table stakes have really moved beyond the operational efficiencies and throwing bodies at it and then just getting the task done. But the focus is now driving a superior customer experience that moves the needle from just tactical solving of problems to strategic and strategic relationships. The great experience that Turvo provides is the consistent execution we enable, the transparency that customers have, and all that builds trust with the customers strengthens those and strengthens those relationships. Yeah, well, and I think that's the, the freight broker or the 3PL of the future, but I think shippers are gonna start thinking a heck of a lot like 3PLs and freight brokers too, where they're gonna say, you know, and maybe not in that they're gonna change their business model per se, but they're gonna also focus more on how can we stop being mired down in the weeds of process. And sometimes some TMS keep you there right? Because they're so focused on execution and payment settlement. And sometimes you just come in and you want to do your job. And so you kind of just stick to the same things you've always done. And it doesn't allow you as an organization to kind of level up and really think, why does strategy matter? Why does being not fatigued and why is working with, you know, my trading partners, but also all the stakeholders within my business how does that matter? So strategy, 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 right? And this is the big thing I think that you're seeing shippers and brokers and 3PLs look at is how does the order side flow down into the freight side of the equation? And while I'm doing that, how can I get visibility to all of it? But beyond, you know, visibility or, you know, execution, um, I believe, you know, we're creating uh, an opportunity where we're going to see a much more strategic optimization. So how is technology enabling these more strategic conversations at shippers or 3PLs to happen faster at that order level? And then for the freight department to kind of work seamlessly with that procurement on the inbound side and sales on the outbound side to really make freight super optimized. Sure. So Turbo really helps the entire workflow across inventory, orders, shipments. And we do that by unifying best of breed systems, not just TMS. There's many TMSs out there that are best in breed, depending on what your model is. There's a TMS that's probably better suited for you than another. WMSs, ERPs, and so forth. And what we're doing is we're ingesting that data and we're giving a user the ability to then peer into their supply chain, optimize and index the data on top of their existing tech stack. Uh, and of course that includes TMS. So just a real real world example. Um, I used to manage product launches at a major uh, manufacturer of appliances. So part of that was understanding where the inventory was 
And then if the inventory wasn't there, where was the inventory? How was it going to get there? And then, oh, by the way, into the to the manufacturing locations, did we have enough raw coming inbound to support the demand that was planned through that engine? So what I just explained there would be a series of emails and phone calls getting to that, not only from the transportation side, let's just say corporate transportation, but then we had inbound, we had procurement, and then we had the demand planning folks. It was a series of emails, phone calls, and, and somewhat a collaborative approach to understand what that is. Now, if I did have a disruption, that problem to, to identify what the problem and what a remedy is could take a day or could take more just by the time I got those answers. Now you could look into the supply chain, your entire supply chain within Turbo, and be able to access all that information at your fingertips because we are ingesting that order information, the shipment information, the transportation order, then of course the POs, and then that inventory data. It's all then being leveled for you into one view so you can then access it. Now, now instead of context switching and having to learn a bunch of different systems, ERP, TMS, WMS, you're just learning one very simple, easy to use application where people can work in one place. And the beauty of it is while we can ingest this data, we also have the ability of writing back to the different best of breed systems, if you would. Now, another example, taking orders and inventory. With those two together in Turbo, it's really easy for a shipper or a 3PL to understand how much inventory is committed, how much is available and so on. Back to my real world example I gave you. So you don't have that uncertainty that causes excess inventory buildup or potential uh, service issue where you're shorting a customer. Yeah, I mean, because inventory levels right now are really out of whack. Um, and then you're going to be back up on inventories and there's going to be a bit of a, you know, volatile time period around inventory, not even yet considering, well, what does that mean for freight? Because just because you have the inventory doesn't always mean you're going to find the capacity for that. So when you are able to really think about those as a team, make it a team sport, um, then you can really start planning more proactively and get ready for these kinds of different market forces that we can't sometimes control. Now, what you described to me really reminded me of like when I first started out in my marketing working at an agency. And, you know, I think marketing had a lot of good technology, especially project management. Um, but largely, a lot of the deliverables at the agency were even done through email, text. And as, you know, there were more platforms that were, were targeting uh, marketing agencies to make that whole client, you know, service and deliverable process much more efficient. Um, and we started using those. We not only had to train our internal people, but we had to get all the customers and everybody who works at different uh, customers and their different job disciplines on board with that technology, right? And so I think we can't be disillusioned to think that, you know, maybe a, a shipper has this uh, initiative to digitize and the three PLs have an initiative to digitize, but they still have to get all the people who aren't working at their company using these platforms in order to get the most ROI. So how do we digitize all the other players in the supply chain network, like individual drivers, or maybe just a one-off person that's working on a project? And then how do you convince everyone in that network, you know, to, to adopt it, start sharing? I mean, is there a lot of training? And, and do, is this even necessary to make it all work? So this this itself, I think, could be a podcast for you. It's just this area. It, it is so. This is the fun part for me, and this is this is how easy it is. So we've invested a lot of time to make our user interface uh, have that sizzle it needs to to adopt. Also, to give you not a lot of noise, but just a lot of uh, actionable intelligence, if you would. And what we've done then is we digitize our customers' supply chain. And when you look at the training for that across the board, you're talking in hours, not days or weeks. Now, with that, what, what we've been able to do then is deliver them an easy to use, simple system that allows them to manage their supply chain. Now, within that functionality, we also have the ability to onboard a contact, onboard a driver, onboard a customer or carrier. And by doing that, it's as simple as putting in the basic information. One of those uh, items is gonna be a, a, an email or a phone number, and then you can invite your contacts just like you would in LinkedIn, let's say. Uh, so to get a driver on board is as simple as having their text or having their phone number and then texting them a link. It'll bring them to the app store, download the driver app, and then they can then execute their 
and, and begin collaborating immediately their work order as it came through as a shipment to be managed through one of our customers. Now, sharing a link uh, and sharing a customer experience with Interval has never been as easy as well. In fact, to as easy it is in inviting a contact within LinkedIn, it's as easy as sharing a link, inviting an email, and then have, beginning to collaborate with your customers. And we see customers doing both, both sharing just a link that's a one-time use, as, as well as inviting them to collaborate and have a view into their supply chain. Um, it, it's really another example of how customer experience matters. And it's not just the external customers, but the internal uh, supply chain customers that you have, drivers, users of the customer that we're uh, ultimately partnered with, but then also that customer experience, what used to be a customer portal, is now much more than that. Uh, how easy is it with Turbo? It, it doesn't get any easier. And then why digitize? Why not? Going back to the Amazon effect, everything's being digitized as, as we look around us, and it's the future of the supply chain. So being ahead of that game is a, is a great position to be in. We're all busy, and this last year has really presented changes that we haven't faced before. Uh, markets have changed. If you look at major re brick and mortar retailers that used to do 75, 80, 90 percent in store and then just a small part of e-commerce, e those are virtually flip flop now in the past year. Now, having the ability to seamlessly connect to every supply chain constituent in the supply chain online and the single cloud native platform may, has made everyone's job easier in that in that supply chain. Customers are now part of their supply chain instead of just being a receiver. Yeah, you know, and that's where that collaboration happens. That's where people start becoming more efficient, not just in your side of the house, but your entire network. And that's critical um, in order to truly see some of that speed, that responsiveness and, and you know, working together mindset that it's going to take in the future of the supply chain. And it's all about enabling those human beings with great technology to make themselves be a bigger part of the supply chain and hear their have their voice heard, or just to make their jobs easier. Because at the end of the day, that's all really people want is is ease of use and to go home and 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 hang out with their family and to say, you know, my day was pretty pretty easy because I have uh, great tools that that make it easy. Uh, just like Batman, right? Not a superhero, but had some really great tools, uh, but it made him seem like a superhero. Now, uh, what I really like about what you described is that I, uh, you know, here at Sonar, in FreightWave Sonar, the, the reason our data is so valuable is because we beef up on the most complete data sets, but we also want to offer that in near real time because the supply chain moves in real time. And when you're talking about connecting everybody and getting everybody into the Turbo platform, that's pretty critical. And the reason why is the role of data and analytics in today's modern supply chain. And so when you bring all of those people in, you're undoubtedly ingesting a lot of data, a lot of activity. And then I have to assume that then that is something you can offer to your customers who are using the platform, those, those shippers, 3PLs and carriers to really measure the health of their business. So in your long career, you've, you've probably talked about data and analytics before today. It's not a new concept, but are they becoming more mainstream, especially in freight? And do you think they're now becoming a must have? Or are people coming to you guys asking for this without you having to say we have it? Absolutely, absolutely. Analytics drive strategic decision-making. And with that strategic decision making, we we then drive a better customer experience. We get better results, build a better bond with our customers, and ultimately our customers win more. With Turbo, we're, we're, we're not the model of sitting on top of systems and then just creating a data lake and then allowing somebody to then uh, run pivot tables and reports on top of it on top of that data lake. What we've and then have a data scientist to uh, essentially run run reports to everybody that asks. What we've done is we put that reporting, that re near real-time reporting, um, right at your fingertips. And we have, a, we have a complete stable of tactical reports. But then when it comes to the strategic side, really allows you to get into some really powerful tools, such as uh, financial metrics, you know, how much money are we making? How much, where are we spending the money? What are we seeing on spikes? Carrier scorecards, supplier scorecards, customer scorecards. And, and understanding what those mean as changes happen in the supply chain. Again, putting actionable intelligence in place and available so we can make better decisions. 
uh, you know, what we really do is we help aggregate the data and provide powerful insights so that our customers have more meaningful KPIs and then create create a, a more profitable supply chain. Well, that's what it's all about, profits, right? And there's a lot to get there. Making profits today aren't as easy, maybe, um, as one might say. It's really easy to say. Use technology to increase profit margins. It'll be good. Trust us. You know, so that's where I think, especially as someone who markets a tech platform with Sonar, but in your world where you're trying to really sell somebody and convince them that they should use this turbo thing that you guys have put out there because it'll, it'll yield better profit margins, you you have to give them stories of actual companies who've done that, right? And so I think that's pretty important and incumbent upon us tech providers to say, hey, here are some actual percentages or improved KPIs, et cetera. So I'd love to hear you know, some people who are using Turbo today to collaborate with their network and maybe what are some of those real world results that you could share with us today, Jeff? Sure, just a couple off the top of my head. Let's talk about let's talk about three different ones. Lineage, great example of a customer experience because of collaboration. Now, Lineage may not be a household name, but they are the world's largest freezer, cold storage warehouse, and they feed the networks of Costco, Walmart, uh, Sam's, etc. So, you know, the example I like to use is, you know, in in, in uh, on Thanksgiving, do you think that that week there was uh, 350 million turkeys made available? Nope, that was building up for a while. And it's companies like Lineage that help make that happen. That is where product is waiting before it goes into our, our retailers where we're buying frozen and refrigerated goods. So with, with Lineage, what we're doing is we're enabling their customers to systematically schedule appointments in a single system with their customers, driving down reduced dwell time, as well as costs associated with increased dwell time. And then we also give them a document sharing app within the, I'm sorry, a document sharing functionality within our driver app that automatically updates POD and bill of lading information in near real time. Driver takes a picture through the driver app, it's now available, that proof of delivery chain has been completed, and then ultimately allows Lineage to bill their customer upon receipt of that. Historically, they had to wait for a driver to, to go to a specific truck stop, upload their data, or at the end of the week when that driver has turned into their local terminal, those documents then uploaded. Again, near real time as that shipment has been completed. Now, Rider's another great one, Rider, Rider Logistics. So they were founded in 1933, so almost 90 years ago. Now, what well, they've been able to not just survive, but thrive because they get a value of investing in that customer experience. So what they can do is they can collaborate with their shipper customers, give them actionable visibility to their inventory, orders, and shipments, and build those relationships and create long-term growth. And, and you can imagine each one of their customers is a different business model and really allows those uh, examples then to be uh, dynamically managed within Turbo. Now, the last one I'll talk about is specific to the time at the time that we're uh, living in right now. So it's it's Tame and Transport. And again, not another, it's not a household name, but it's a great example. They're a fast growing 3PL in the Southeast that's really made collaboration in Turbo a major differentiator. They built an amazing carrier network because it's easy to collaborate in Turbo. So the carriers like working with them. And because of that, they've got a great reputation based on their execution. So what that's done is that's earned them many, many shipments, expedited shipments because of COVID-19 vaccines. That's really where they're coming in. And the pharma companies know that they can trust Taman. So here collaboration directly leads to life-saving vaccines getting delivered and keeping people healthy. Well, I'll tell you what, just being there over the long haul, no pun intended, but companies like Attainment um, who have doubled down on saying our strategy as a business is to provide the best experience possible and we're going to use technology, some of the most innovative technology on the market to do that, uh, they're going to be here a while. Uh, they're going to have staying power and you're going to see a nice steady march of their profits and their margin being protected over time and maybe even increased. You know, And what I love about Tamen, one, they're both a Sonar and a Turbo customer. And what Ryan Pamplin over there is doing as the director of innovation is just amazing. It's throughout their whole DNA. 
you know, and we've been very fortunate as well to share several customers between Turbo and Sonar because I think we're we're both companies who are trying to say, look, the tech is here, the data is here to help you make informed decisions that allow you to get out of the process of we the weeds of process and and raise up to have collaborations uh, around data so that there's no emotional conversation that it's about facts and it's about moving the industry forward because the reality is no individual person in the supply chain can make it efficient it's going to take everybody working together and you know through platforms like turbo they're able to collaborate through platforms like a sonar they're able to make better decisions on the truckload market space and so jeff i really appreciate you coming on here to stack to tell us a little bit about you know what's going on in the space of freight technology in relation to collaboration and how companies are using turbo to pull that off and improve their uh, customer experience and thereby improving their competitive advantage and taking some of that market share away from uh, some of the other folks that are not doubling down on technology to do that. Now, you had mentioned Ryder, and I know you guys have a great webinar coming up that's done through the FreightWaves platform here soon with them. I believe Katon, the chief product officer is uh, at Turvo, is going to be hosting that along with Kendra Phillips over there, the CTO of Ryder. So when when can folks go ahead and check that out? Because I know it's maybe in a week from, from this episode. Yes, yes, I, I believe we'll have it put up with within a week after that, so within the next two weeks. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody catches that. So if you're watching this uh, on the on the Freightways website or the Sonar blog, we're going to put a link to that webinar that's coming up pretty soon here in the first part of April. But Jeff, I really appreciate you coming on today and sharing your thoughts with the watchers and listeners of Stacked. Um, I can't wait to see what Turbo has in front of it, uh, as well as Sonar, and it seems like we'll continue to help companies level up their supply chains. So thanks again for coming on. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. And for all of our watchers and listeners out there of Stacked, I appreciate you turning in each week to see what's going on in the world of freight technology and kind of get to meet some really cool companies who are doing really cool things like Turbo. Take care.